Blend modes are a concept that exists in almost all graphics and video programs. Learning the basics of how they work will be a great addition to your design skill set. So let's jump in. What's up guys, it's Trent and today we're talking about the blend modes in all the Affinity programs. This includes Affinity Designer, Photo, and Publisher. However, the great news is that a lot of these concepts are applicable to many other graphics programs as well. Photoshop, Procreate, Illustrator, DaVinci Resolve, all of them support blend modes. So when you learn how blend modes work, it's really a force multiplier that will make you more productive in many programs. Now I have a longer video on my channel that's a deep dive into all the blend modes in the Affinity programs, and it has tons of examples also. If you wanna deep dive into all the blend modes, be sure to check out that longer video after this one. I'll leave a link in the description. Now a blend mode specifies the way a layer interacts with the layer beneath it. So let's look at a simple example here. In my layer stack, you can see I have this gray square on the left here. And then on the right, I just have this flower image next to it. Now, if I take my gray square and I drag it over the image, of course it blocks it. And the reason this happens is because the blend mode is set to normal. If I look at my layer stack over here, when I have the gray square selected, I can see that it says normal. But what I can do is I can click and I can select some other value here. I'm gonna choose multiply. And what you can see now is that the gray square is actually having a darkening effect. So if I move the square around, you can see it's darkening different areas. And if I resize it, it's still having that effect. Now in this example, the square was my blend layer and the layer below it is called the base layer. And when we blend the layers, what it does is it looks for the pixel on the top layer and matches it with the pixel on the bottom layer. And it runs it through some particular type of formula. In this case, it was the multiply formula. And in this case, the result is that the square is darker. So we got this darker output over here. And then we get that darker pixel in the final result. And this is just one pixel example, but this is happening everywhere. The gray square is covering the layer below it. Now, when I have this gray layer selected here, if I click on the blend mode dropdown, you can see there's lots of different categories here. And you may have randomly scrolled through them at some point in your life and seen different effects. There are a lot here and I'm not gonna go into all of them. Rather, I'm just gonna talk about what each of these different categories means, what each of these different groupings mean. Like I said, in my longer video, I go into each of these in detail, so be sure to check that one out after this video. Now, if I select this drop down here, the first group are the darkening blend modes. And by far the most used one is the multiply mode here. So let's look at that one. Let's say I wanna make a treasure map or something for a video game. I wanna make some type of map to help the player know where to go. Well, I have this paper texture here, and I also have this map image, and I can drag my map image over the paper. Now it doesn't look that great right now, but what I can do is I can set the blend mode to multiply. So let's do that. I have the map selected and I'll go and I'll select multiply. And you can see what happened. It took the darks of our image and it used it to darken the paper below it. So it's almost like that image is actually part of the map here. I could do the same with this compass here. So I'll move that over here. Let's resize it. And I'll set the blend mode to multiply. So there we go. Now it's a little dark compared to the map there. I can change the opacity, of course. I can do the same with text. So let me move that over here and I'll choose a better font. That looks a little more stylized. Now, if I set this to multiply, it'll likely disappear. And you can see it does disappear because the text was white. Let me put it back to normal. Multiply is gonna have the best effect when it's some type of gray level. So let me make this world map gray and I'll set it to multiply. And there we go. I can change the level of gray to change the effect. And if I zoom in, you can see the paper through the letters. Now you may wonder why is this effect called multiply? The reason it's called multiply is because it treats the value of your blend layer as if it was between zero and one. So let me give you an example. I'll draw a square here. Now, if I put this square at 50%, it's going to assume that's 0.5. So if I set it to multiply, it's essentially multiplying the lightness of the layer below it by 0.5. In other words, reducing it in half. If I do the box, it's a little clearer here. And if I set the value of it to 25%, somewhere around there, that's about 25%, the layer below it's gonna be about 25% as bright. Now earlier the text was white and it disappeared. That's because white is seen as 1.0. So if I move the color of the square up to 100%, 1.0, it disappears. So this is basically multiplying the level below by one, which is having no effect. Now, of course, since we had the darkening modes, we're going to have lightening modes also. So if I select on this layer here, if I go below, you can see we have the lighten modes here. Now, by far the most popular one is screen. So if I drag a rectangle on my image, I have it above my car here. If I set it to screen, it's going to brighten it up. Now it's kind of the opposite of multiply. If I go down to black, my square will disappear. If I go to 100% white, it'll be pure white. 
and some level in between will be a various level of value. There's some really cool lighting effects you can do with screen. For example, let's say I wanna make a glowing effect for these lights here. Well, I can take a circle. Let's make it say red. Now this is the normal blend mode right now. What I'll do is I'll do some FX on it. I'll give it a Gaussian blur here. Let's make it really blurry. Now you can see there's some glowing here, but it's really not that great. Let's change the blend mode to screen. So I'll select my ellipse here. I'll set the blend mode to screen. And now you can see it looks like it's really glowing. Actually, I can take this ellipse, I can copy it over. Let's put it there. Maybe let's put another one down here. Let me group these so I can toggle on and off. So this is before, after, before, after. And that's just taking these ellipses and setting their blend mode to screen with a little bit of a blur filter too. Next, we have the contrast blend modes. And these are the ones here. Now the concept behind these is a little bit interesting. It's basically going to stack a lighten mode on top of a darken mode. And what I mean by that is when we add a value that's greater than 50% gray, it will be lightening our image. And when we add a value that's below 50% gray, it will be darkening our image. So instead of switching between two different blend modes, it's almost like we get two of them in one. Let me show you an example here. So I'm in Affinity Designer. I'm going to go to the pixel persona and I'm going to add a pixel layer here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set this blend mode to overlay here. And overlay is the most popular contrast blend mode. It's basically screen and multiply together in one blend mode. So I'll select the paintbrush over here. So let me give you an extreme example. I'll select a bright white over here. It's probably about 75% of the value. And if I color it in, you can see it's having a lightening effect. This is the same as the screen I showed you before. And if I go brighter, it's gonna be even brighter. So if I go back to normal, that's where I was painting. So let me go back to overlay. Now, if I drag the color and I make it below 50%, like somewhere in the dark area, it will start darkening my image. And this is basically the multiply effect. So let me go back to normal. So I was painting in this gray here and this white. So this gray part is really dark, it's darkening it, and this lighter part is going to lighten it. Now let me delete that. Let me add another one. I'll set it to overlay again. If I do 50%, which is right in the middle, you'll barely see any difference. So I'm painting in 50% here. I'll put it back to normal. So because it's 50%, it's not really lightening or darkening. It's just basically having no effect that we can really see. I'll put it to overlay. But again, if I make it dark, this will darken things. And if I make it light, this will lighten things. Next, we have the comparative modes, difference, exclusion, subtract, and divide. These ones are a little more specialized, but I think there are some cool effects we can get with them. One that I like is the difference mode, which will show us the difference between two images. So these two images are almost the same, but there's one difference between them. You can see if you can find it, or we can just use the difference mode to find it easily. So I'll take this image here, and let me set the mode to difference. And then what I'll do is I'll drag it over the other image and I'll make sure they're aligned perfectly. And when I do that, you can actually see a difference here. So if I zoom in, you see this person highlighted there. So everything that's black here is common to the two images. And here I can see the difference. So if I drag them apart, we can see that there's a person here and that person is missing in this image over here. So it's a cool trick if you're trying to find difference between two images, just make sure they're the same and they fit over each other perfectly. Next, we have the component blend modes. And that's gonna take one of these components in our layer above, hue, saturation, color, luminosity, and it's going to apply it to the layer below. So we have this blue car. What I did beforehand is I just created a little pixel layer above it with this color green. Now we could reduce the opacity of this layer and it kind of looks like the layer below is green, but it's not a really great effect. I'll put that back to 100%. A better way to do that would be to use the hue blend mode. So let's select that. I'll go down and I'll select hue. Now you can see that it's taking our green and it's applying it to the blue. I'll go to the pixel persona here. Let me get a paintbrush. If you saw my video on protect alpha, you'll know that I can actually click this button here, protect alpha. And I can get a different color and I can just paint on my pixel layer. If I want to change the color of my car. There are many other ways to do this. This is just one example. I could also make it red. There's all sorts of things you can do there. So the next group of blend modes are what I call the other blend modes. And you can see them here. They can be a little less predictable, but I think they're really good for getting lighting effects. So let me take this square and cover my image here. And I'll set this blend mode to something like glow. It's a very powerful effect when it's solid, but if you dial down the values, you can get some kind of interesting things going on here. And you can rotate around the color change the brightness and darkness. You can also try the reflect blend mode and you can increase the saturation, 
definitely getting a very stylized effect here. So these ones are fun to experiment with. Now, one of these other blend modes that is fairly easy to understand is the average blend mode. And that's gonna be the same as taking 50% opacity. So let me show you an example. I'll drag a square over this image here and I'll just duplicate it and put it over this other one. So for the 50% opacity case, I'll just take the opacity and I'll put it to 50%. And then for the other one, I'll set its blend mode to average. And you can see it's basically the same thing. So that one is fairly easy to understand. But like I said, with the other ones, maybe you just wanna experiment and see what happens. Finally, all the way at the bottom, we have the erase blend mode. Let's say I have this text here that says New York, and I wanna cut that shape out of this rectangle here so I can see through it into the buildings behind. Well, what I can do is with New York selected, I'll set its blend mode to erase. Now, if I zoom in, you'll see that there's this checkerboard pattern behind it. And that means it's erasing through my whole image. Let me drag it over here. Here you can see New York is above the rectangle, but it's erasing too much. It's going straight through the whole canvas. Usually this isn't what you want, but there's an easy fix for it. And that is that we can group these two objects together. So with New York and my rectangle selected, I'll just group them, Control G. And now you see it gave me the desired effect here. If I move this around, I can actually see through all my text. So when you group the objects together, the erase effect on this layer is just affecting the layer below it within the group. It's not gonna go through your whole image. Now this video has just been a short introduction to how blend modes work. If you wanna know how they all work, be sure to check out my longer video on all the blend modes for Affinity programs. I give an example of each blend mode and I also explain the logic of how they work. So be sure to check it out for more details. Thanks for watching and see you in the next video.